to talk about some of the market action. Let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegsat. Folks, you can check out Teddy's outstanding newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report. He has got new issues out every Monday, updates throughout the week when warranted. You can sign up for $97. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You get it for a full month, folks. Uh, I guarantee you'll get some value out of it. And for whatever reason, if you're not going to keep it, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can't go wrong. Head on over there and check it out while we're talking to our man Teddy Kegstat. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. All right, we're going to kick it off with the end, man. We got to. So listen, uh, okay. great conversation last week, man. Kudos to you. You've had some great calls. You know, um, we were all looking for potentially that first hike since 2007. You came out. You said, listen, you know, there is definitely some area here. We are way away from where the Bank of Japan will step in. There might be some pressure. And uh, boy, it seems like it played out to a T. We're pushing 152, which is pretty remarkable on the, feels, on the heels of that first hike. Um, but now we're coming into 152. What do you think of some of that action? Pretty remarkable. Uh, well, for sure, the Bank of Japan, I'm sure, is not happy with where the U.S. dollar yen is trading at right now. Um, the the rate hike finally came as the first one in 17 years. You know, so I mean, I wouldn't. I I would have to say that anybody out there that thinks the BOJ is going to react again anytime soon you might want to rethink that one, you know? So um, they're not going on a hawkish bender or anything, okay? <laughs> so that's something, you, well, I mean, it's just the reality of things. You oh, know? the chart. Uh, you know, the, I mean, you know, so, but that's, but right now, I'd be careful with the spike, you know, what's going on. It's, it's, it's more dollar driven, I think, than anything, you know? So it, you, you we're making a new high. Yes, that's true. We're above the 150 critical level for the, you know, the US dollar yen relationship. And, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it, it's not so much that the dollar is so strong, but think about the interest rate, you know, reality of what's going on now. You know, we, we've been talking about the fact that we've already been right about them pushing out the cuts. OK, and now they're talking about maybe not doing as many cuts, you know, um, even if they were to do three or four, you know, like, you know, there were expectations of them doing, you know, many more over, to, you know, whatever time period, you know, to come in front of us. Um, it's not happening. You know, the reality is we're at where they want us to be no matter what as a floor. You know, uh, to cut is more of like in an emergency kind of situation where right now the, the, any type of cutting they do is going to be a short term little relief before they start raising again. I mean, it's just a fact. You know, this is the way things are going. You know, we need to have that pricing. You know, people ha are under this this false illusion that interest rates are supposed to be at zero. No, they're not. That's actually not true whatsoever. You know, it's one of the worst things that you can do to an economy, you know. Because you don't have any room, you know. So even if we do get, let's say, the three cuts, we've already factored in one and a half to, to two cuts already in the pricing of the market, okay? So that means that, and I guarantee you that the closer we get to the summertime, and right now every money manager this year has been probably – coddling all the people that have been getting crushed on their bond funds for the past year and a half saying oh you got the summer to look forward to and maybe even start putting more money in because they're going to start cutting rates that's a trap it's a trap you know i mean no matter what think about where where how if you look at the where we were in trading in you know, just in pricing okay where we were last fall you know, that's when we knew that the hiking it was over. We're wondering when are they going to start cutting. We know that that's been getting pushed out, but we've bounced already to a point where we've absorbed what they're basically going to do. So, what does that leave, leave as far as where do, where's your expectations going to be? Like for housing, we have existing home sales coming up this for uh, what is it on Friday, I believe. You know, so that's a big number. You know, these these numbers are going to continue to be influenced. You want to talk about inf whether inflation comes into the market or not? We can see that through oil and other things, but the real estate market is is not going to get that kind of like fueling surge that they think that they're going to get. I mean, even if they do get three a total of three, you know, quarters of a point cut over, you know, s six months or over the next year, I mean, how much is that really going to fuel the real estate market? I mean, you're talking about three quarters of a point. You know, I mean, when we came off of zero, everyone's saying, oh, it went up too quickly. Well, when you're coming up from zero, the relationship, I mean, from a quarter from your, a quarter point discount rate and you go to a half a point, well, it's a 100% jump in interest rates. It's still only a quarter point, you know. So, and I think that people got to start looking at those relationships. I mean, like today, you can tell by the spreads between the two, five, and 10 that everyone's waiting on Powell to speak. But then what are, what are your real expectations for 
pricing. I mean, the bonds and the and the interest rate market are probably just establishing a wide range trade where we know that the floor has been set for sure until they start raising again. But as far as how much higher they're going to go, meaning yields going down, um, we're almost there. If we have, we may, we probably haven't hit that high yet, but we're close to it. And once we hit that, you know, let, let's say we're at the point where they start cutting, we're going to probably hit the cycle where they after the first interest rate cut happens we might go a little bit higher in pricing in the in the interest rate quadrant and i guarantee you before they're done cutting we'll have already set the high and been trying in, in the market we pushing yields higher that's most likely what will happen because of where we're priced at you know and this is a big thing for the dollar so the dollar right now is fueled by the nice rally that you've seen or <clears throat> excuse me the nice sell-off you've seen in the treasury markets over the last week that's kind of starting to subside. You know, obviously it's Fed Day today. We'll be free and clear after that for a little while. But I, w I wouldn't have too high of an expectations for the trend right now. You know, and that also gets back to the U.S. dollar yen where we're at. Also, you know, um, we know that we're not hiking. You know, so I think right now you're just going to see a blow off high here. I'd be very careful. If you're long the U.S. dollar yen, I'd be very, very cautious with your uh, with your risk right now. I would be careful. I wouldn't want to sell into this right now. Wait for a sell signal. But we're at a, a point where we could see a nice little inversion. We've had a nice trend. I mean, think about the rally that we've had in the U.S. dollar yen over the last two and a half weeks. We went from 146 to 151, pushing 152 today. That's a big move. And the only thing that happened was the BOJ finally raise rates for the first time in 17 years. We haven't done anything and we're waiting on an expectation of cutting rates. So that means the fundamentals now are are, are pointing saying, hey, we're, 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 I'm not trying to say call a top, but we're topping as far as the fundamentals. There's no fundamental drive to say that the US dollar is gonna gain strength because of rate hikes, that's not happening. We know that the US dollar yen, they're pretty much probably done doing anything for a while. They're gonna wait and see at least I would think three four to five months before they have any more action you know so be careful with the swings you know us dollar yen it's a nice bounce and we're pushing the high that we set back in what was it november around november 15th when we were trading just above where we're tra like trading at right now today so yeah. we can spike above that I, I just be really cautious anyone that thinks we're going to like 170 or something like that and not that it can't happen um, I, I just the fundamentals aren't lining up like that, you know, so um, I mean, we'll see. I mean, they just had announced a lot of wage increases also in Japan for the first time in a very long time across the board. So that's we'll see how these things impact their economy and things like that. Like it's not going to happen overnight. So I think you're going to see volatility with the U.S. dollar yen. Um, I'm still a soft bull um but i'm not bearish but i'm certainly not gonna be a really gung-ho bull on this one man that was an awesome nine minutes can you hang with us for the break yeah. we'll come back talk maybe the euro talk some others folks sure. head on over to the front page of tfnn you got three minutes during the break you heard the great information check out the tiger forex report we'll come back with teddy we'll finish up the show we got the yen right now putting at 151.74 we'll be right back Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by four, NASDAQ 100 off by about single digits. We got the 10-year yield sitting right at about 4.3%. 4 and Teddy, I want to get your take maybe on crude. Um, pretty interesting. We just saw an 83 price point on crude. We've seen some higher highs and some higher lows. Could potentially complicate the situation when you get into some of the inflation numbers. Uh, what do you think of that crude price? Well, we had the uh, breakout. We were talking about this last week that if we would stay above $79, uh, around $80 and get a close, we should see higher move highs. We got that. Right now in the Tiger Forex report, we're right in the middle of our critical resistance zone. I think we could still chop around around this 81 to uh, 84.50 area, probably for a couple more sessions. I think you're going to find some nice resistance here. It'll probably digest. I don't see it really selling off. I mean, today the way it was looking earlier was like look, look like you might want to have a nice reversal but we have to see how it closes if we could maybe settle near the lows of where we had already today not necessarily making new lows then maybe we get a nice little profit taking slide um but overall higher move highs and higher move lows you know i would say unless we get below 78 dollars you know and close below that i wouldn't be too bearish on crude right now i think you're going to have to be pretty much neutral to higher as far as direction for the uh, for the crude market i have a right. euro um, um trade for you 
Perfect. So, Let's do it. We'll wrap it up okay. with the euro. What do we got? So, all right. So we know that last week when we talked, we were coming off of a higher move high. That higher move high in the euro US dollar is a very significant high right now. Reason being, if the market reverses gears and, and rallies back to that level and takes it out, that means the longer term bull trend at least even on a big range trade bias is very strong, meaning that you could probably see the euro US dollar get back to about the 111 area, maybe even push new highs that we um, take out the highs from last Christmas time. Um, but today and yesterday, we were bobbling right above our monthly directional pivot level from the Tiger Forex report at 108.34. So now the key here is, will we get below that area if we settle below that then yeah we could see a nice little slide but i'd be careful right now because we're hitting we're on strong support for that one man i appreciate the clarity with those numbers man you make it so clear folks that's how he makes it in the tiger forex report go over there and check it out at tfnn.com teddy thanks so much man we look forward to talking to you next week have a great one sounds good take care tommy